So seven things you did not know about commercial industrial space. That is the third type of commercial business. Jump in here and we'll talk about it in a second. My name is Fadi Kudair. I'm a local realtor with Sun Group Ottawa. And for more tips and tricks about real estate and more to learn about real estate, don't forget to follow our channel, Canada on the Rocks. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and subscribe, and let's go. Industrial warehousing, or industrial in general. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, the industrial space has taken a little bit of a, a different array just because of the advent of uh, deliveries, uh, the likes of Amazon, drop deliveries, and things like that, that actually made industrial a lot more prominent. And they have a lot lower risk to start with as a type of asset. So let's talk about the types that the industrial assets are looking like here in the city of Ottawa. First one is bulk warehouse. So this is like places, you know, we're talking about the Amazon uh, warehouse. We're talking about the uh, Walmart warehouse. We're talking about spaces that require a massive footprint of warehousing, generally a little bit higher ceiling than normal, above 21 uh, feet or so. Uh, and these ones tend to have a lot less office space. We're talking about five to 10% office space just because you don't need it. It's mostly for warehousing products, drop deliveries. And a lot of the times they are gonna be closer to amenities or closer to highways uh, just for ease of getting in and out for massive trucks. Number two, flex warehouse or flex space. This is a little bit different. Uh, tends to be a little bit less space uh, and tends to have a little bit more office space than normal. Uh, think of those as like the mom and pop shop that are going to be, you know, housing, um, uh, for example, a plumber uh, or housing a contractor of some sort where they have a little bit of both. They don't necessarily need to do a lot of deliveries and things like that, but they still want the space to be able to house some of their materials and some of the equipment. Number three is heavy manufacturing. So these ones tend to be a little bit on the outskirts of the city. They tend to have a specialized zone, very heavy customized. And the reason being is because they do have specific things and specific reason to exist. And that is manufacturing a certain product. So they might have a product line, they might have certain chemicals that they emit and things like that. So they tend to be a little bit more on the outskirts as we've discussed. A perfect example for this would be like a car manufacturing uh, for the assembly line or something like GM motors or something like that. Number four is light assembly. Uh, so this is kind of a crossover between flex space and warehousing. And it's really just think of it as like, you know, like Ikea, for example, very light assembly, very uh, little sort of uh, heavy uh, footprint. It's not as much chemical. They tend to be a little bit less on the space side, a lot more office space and a lot less sort of... Uh, power uh, need and what have you. For example, with the uh, heavy machinery, it requires certain power. Uh, however, for the flex space, a little bit less. Think of it like a data center, uh, a call center, that kind of business that will still require redundancy and still requires a certain amount of power and needs to be fulfilled to be able to deliver the service. Number five, cold storage. So cold storage, I mean, the, na the name just kind of says itself. So think of those as um, warehousing for Loblaws, warehousing for Sobeys, uh, where potentially you have uh, perishable items that will need to be stored and kept at a certain degree and what have you. There's a lot more specification that goes with those. They tend to be a little bit closer to the city, uh, closer to amenities, closer to highways. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot more uh, needs specifically around uh, building them, uh, you know, when it comes to foundations and what have you, because they do need to be able to withstand the really harsh conditions, the cold and what have you for the cold storage. Number six, that's more like a showroom kind of business. And that tends to be, for example, like car dealership. Uh, you'll find it's, a, it's like a warehouse kind of mentality, but in the same token, it does have office space. It does have a little bit of a retail front. This could be like a showroom for, um, you know, like a, a car business or a showroom for, uh, for example, like a, a kitchen manufacturer, something like that, that would require to have a heavy footprint of clientele. It's still going to be accessible, still going to be in an in a, a area in the city that's um, easy on traffic and what have you for those folks to come in. Uh, but it serves two purposes. One, you have the back end sort of uh, warehousing, keeping the product and what have you. And then the other is the front end where essentially you're dealing with clients and uh, you know have office space to be able to do uh, the deals and, and what have you. Number seven, storage facilities. So those ones tend to be uh, becoming more and more popular. And there's two types of storage facilities. There's the, uh, the ones that are a little bit more dispersed, laid, laid out 
They tend to be uh, not necessarily, you know, climate control, what have you. And those are mostly on the outskirts of the city. And the reason why we're seeing more and more of these storage facilities popping up, it's because of the advent of less space needed and what have you. And you're trying to kind of jam people in, in that real estate that we have. Uh, and then you also have the other type, which is uh, the ones that are going to be mostly in the city, a lot of accessibility. They might uh, tend to be multiple levels like diamond storage. Uh, and these ones are climate control, very easy to, to get in and out. And the client can actually access these all year round. For more tips and tricks like that on real estate, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Canada on the Rocks. My name is Fadi Kudera. I'm your local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa.